This is our fourth video in our glass and paint unit in forensic science, and this one is over the composition of paint samples. So paint is a surface coating and is a normal presence in our environment. It's literally everywhere. And the most part of paint examinations in forensics is comparative in nature. You're trying to match a recovered paint sample to its source. We have about three reasons we will use paint, either just to cover the surface of an object for aesthetic reasons, so we want it to look pretty, and to protect objects. And the properties of the paint is going to vary depending on its intended use. So we can analyze paint microscopically or chemically. Paint is usually categorized as either automotive, architectural or household, or artistic. Paint is composed of four components. The first one is the pigment, which is an inorganic or inorganic compound that gives it its color. Then there is a binder that's what's going to adhere the pigment to the surface that it's being applied to. They will also mix in extenders, which are solid components that have a variety of purposes, such as giving it body, giving it greater water resistance, making it easier to apply or just to reduce its cost. And the last component is a solvent, which is a liquid that applies the pigment and then evaporates during the drying process. So paint is actually a type of solution. So forensic analysts can't analyze all of these components. So they're primarily looking at the binders and the extenders and sometimes the pigment. One of the most important characteristics and properties of the paint is that it's often applied in layers, and it's a sequence of layers. And so when we analyze paint, we're going to look at the number of layers, the color of the layers, the thickness of the layers, if they have any fluorescent properties, and their chemical analysis, which we'll do with infrared spectroscopy. And next time we will talk about the microscopical analysis of paint. Characteristics of paint, which can be visualized through a microscope. If y'all don't remember from previously, class characteristics means we can narrow the paint down to one type, but not necessarily a single source. And these class characteristics include the color of the paint, the finish of the paint, and the distribution of the paint. Paint is going to mostly occur in multi-layered fragments or chips, abrasions, marks, and also droplets in the case of spray paints. Examining paint with a microscope is going to be best suited for multi-layered fragments of paint. And we're going to look at the characteristics of the paint under what's called a stereo microscope. This will be our last video on forensic paint and glass analysis. And we're going to finish up with talking about how you prepare paint samples for analysis and also the chemical analysis of paint. So paint samples have to be prepared for a chemical analysis. And there are several different ways to chemically analyze the paint to discover the compounds present. And one of the methods is called Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR for short. And what that's going to do is pass an infrared beam of light through the paint layer. To do this, you're going to have to use a tool called a micro roller to get a layer of paint as thin as possible. So you have to do this one layer at a time. You can't analyze different layers at the same time. So if you can't separate the layers with a razor blade, you're going to want to record the order of the layers analyzed. So you can do the same with a reference sample when you go to match it. The thing about FTIR is that you can't use glass slides for it because the glass will absorb the infrared radiation. So you need a neutral background sample holder that has um, results that will be transparent to infrared radiation. So they use a salt disc, which is usually potassium bromide, to prepare the sample on. So when we chemically analyze paint, infrared spectrometry is the go-to method. You're going to irradiate the sample with some sort of infrared radiation, and that's going to cause the molecules to vibrate. The vibrations translate to a molecular structure of the compound in the paint, 
And so the spectrometer can graph that and show the mass and relative abundance of the compounds. And this can also help analysts determine spe spe specific binders in the paint because certain binders have very characteristic peaks on one of these IR graphs. They can also pick up on pigments this way because the pigments have sharper peaks on an IR graph than a binder type. Now, if you're analyzing car paint, you have to analyze all the layers of the paint from the top coat to the bottom. So the clear coat is going to be first, and then the color, and then the primer, and then the primer surfacer. And all of these have to be analyzed to get a real good idea of what car came, the paint came from in the case of like a hit and run. So here's an example of what you would get with a infrared spectrometry graph. So these very sharp peaks over here, these are going to be some kind of pigment. And then these one over here, these specific peaks in these places are going to indicate a certain binder type. Another way you can analyze uh, glass or paint samples is with gas chromatog chromatography with mass spectrometer, or GCMS for short. Um, if you ever watched NCIS when Abby Shuto would talk about major mass spec, that's who she's talking about. So gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, um, what it does, it's going to take a small sample of the paint and it's going to heat it into gas phase and then pass it through a chromatography column and then through a mass spectrometer to give another graph like what we saw previously. So you take a small sample of the paint and put it in a pyrolysis cup, pyrolysis cup, and then a stick goes in there, and then they, they introduce that to the pyrolysis chamber. It's heated to gas, and then the gas is analyzed and measured, and it'll identify the chemical components and the concentration present in the sample. And then once you have that, you can use this information to match the paint and the layering methods to known samples, um, which distributors and manufacturers may uh, have, and they can be used to, tell, to help establish the events of the crime and convict a guilty person.